today is Sunday, July, July what? Uh oh, <laughs> I think the 19th. Uh, yeah, the 19th. Sunday, July 19th, 2020. About 2.30 in the afternoon, about 61, 62 degrees, and we're looking at our new chickens that we picked up this week. So these two, uh, I forgot the names already, but this black one is an uh, Americana. And my wife knows the names of these two, I just can't remember. But this one's Americana, and they all lay different colored eggs. Like she will lay blue eggs, the Americana, and then these two are supposed to lay like green olive, olive colored type eggs. So I'm looking forward to that. They're pretty young, they're only a few months old at this point, so they won't actually lay until next year in the springtime. But since we've, we've uh, lost a couple layers, I mean, they're, they're still here, they just don't lay anymore. Uh, we decided to pick up a few more to kind of boost our flock and get an increase in eggs because we've only been getting three eggs a day from five ladies. So somebody's slacking. And the lady I picked these chicks up from showed me how to actually check and see who's laying, but nah, I don't really care. They're just going to live out their lives. We were going to eat them. In fact, they're in there causing mischief. We were going to eat them, but that was... Man, when did we get these ladies? Like three years ago or something? You know, a lot's changed since then. My wife doesn't eat meat at all anymore. And since she doesn't, I tend to not eat it anymore either. I don't have any problem with it. Um, but, yeah. There's, I don't really see a point in buying meat or having meat around if she's not going to eat it. And I'm too lazy to cook two meals. So, <laughs> but Anyway, we are going to get into the split today. Oh, I forgot to show this guy. There's this guy. Got a little bit of fog, like some patchy fog. These big puffy things flying around. But mostly sunny. It's been mostly sunny and nice. A little, little on the cool side, but nice overall today. So what we're gonna do is just get into the split here, which is on this one, and see how many queen cells they put together. Hopefully they built queen cells on two of the four frames that I have in there. And then if they have built queen cells on at least two of the four frames, we're gonna split them up again. So we're gonna have one and then two next to this active hive here. And eventually I'm going to rearrange this hive here. I was reading through Les Crowder's um, horizontal, or not horizontal, um, Top Bar Beekeeping. Really great book, by the way, if you are interested in beekeeping books, that's a, that's a good one, worth reading. Really, really thin, so it's, it's a, a quick weekend type read. Lots of pictures and good methods and some, a little bit of philosophy about beekeeping and stuff. It's great, really good. So, uh, eventually, before winter time, probably during an inspection and in, um, August or something, one, maybe one of the last inspections before I get them all buttoned up for winter. I'm going to rearrange this far left hive here and move the entrance onto the far left over there <clears throat> and then have just one one frame of honey on the end and then brood nest and then honey frames to the end of the hive. That way the entrance will be there, they'll be flying in, they're, they'll have to move to the brood nest and then throughout the winter they'll consume the honey going back this way. So when spring comes around, they'll be butted up against this hive here, which will hopefully be occupied. So they can they can share the warmth in there. So that's sort of the idea. We'll see how it works out. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and stop talking. And oh no, I lied. One last thing. These things here, <clears throat> these are queen clips, or queen, like little queen grabber cage things just real simple since I have now seen random Queens on more than one inspection I figured I may as well just bring these guys out I've had them for quite some time like multiple years I've, I've won both of them in uh, raffles at the at my beekeeping meetings so I've had them I just have not used them but I should have them with me in case I see Queens that I can just snatch if I need to. Okay, for real though, let's get into these into these bees. This camera set up. 
get it as straight as I can. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> And no smoke this time, just because I'm lazy and I didn't do it. But this shouldn't take very long, so I say shouldn't. There's a bunch of dead bees in this corner over here. They must have gotten trapped when I put the lid on last time. It's too bad. And then I have my, my separator, number four. got some cross combing. They have attached this far left frame to the wall. I'm going to scrape all that off. I'll make them sore. Yeah, they've done exactly what I have expected them to do, which is to fill this with honey. They put a little bit of comb there, so I'm just going to scrape all that off before putting it back in. If all works out, I'm going to have two five frame, five frame nukes out of this job. Alright, now I'm going to dig into the brood nest here and see, see what there is to see. Still got some brood ready to hatch out of this one. No cells. <sighs> okay, here's a cell on this one. There's a couple cells actually. And we've got a few more on this side. Okay.
Mephraim actually has foundations, so I can't can't really cut them out if I wanted to. Ugh, I don't like foundation. Once I cycle these frames out, probably next year I'm just gonna cut all the foundation out. Not my not my not my thing. I don't don't care for it. Some people like it. Not me. You can see a bee hatching in this on this frame. Let's see if it'll show up. Uh, so right right there. Let's see here's the camera. See what pointed out there. I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna show up. These bees out of the way. Right right there. There's movement in there. The antennas are sticking out. She's coming out. Pretty cool. But I don't see any queen cells. And this one's another foundation frame. The foundation's all warped, so you can only use like 70% of the frame. Maybe not even that much, maybe 60%. Cells. Well, let's see. Here's one. Is there a, oh, there's a larva in there. Okay. A larva in this one. There's a larva in that one, but that one, that cell may have gotten a little damaged, so they may tear it down. What about this one? I don't see a larva in there. Any others? I don't see any cells on this one either. Bunch of uh, brood, but I don't see any cells on this frame. That's a little surprising. I think that's the end of the the frames that I put in here. That's okay. They had a good amount of brood, so I'm just going to go ahead and take this one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. And split them up. <laughs> so. This one that has. Oh, and I guess five. Okay, so. And then all I'm going to do is just rearrange, rearrange these a little bit. So that the queen cells are facing the brood. Let's 
gonna take my trusty number four, slide it in here. Resource frames. Uh, this one, ooh, that's heavy. To the outside. And then put my. You have babies behind you, by the way. No, oh, alright. Well, they're behind your board. Katasu walked away. Oh, alright. I'm going to put these here. And I'm going to be careful with them. And I'm just going to temporarily pull this one out. so I can put the other frame in without disrupting things too much. That takes care of them. <clears throat> now I'm going to do the same thing in, the, in this one. So I'm going to find my frames. So here's the one with all the crude. So I'm going to put this this side facing the cells. So that when the brood hatches out, I'll uh, go take care of them. This one has this one has all the cells. And the chickens will come by and eat up this. Oh, here comes one right now. Here come the little babies. Ooh, they like that. The uh, the older chickens have been been bullying the babies a little bit. They've been learning the pecking order.
this one. This one's a honey frame, so I'm just going to put it here on the end. Put this one back in here the way it was this way. That one in last because I'm gonna put yeah, so I'm gonna put this one like this the brutal hatch out and then I'm gonna put this one Backwards. Put this one like this, and where are my cells? on this one to actually now that I think about it actually I have more I have more brood cells in this one than in five so I'm actually gonna take this one and put it into five oh, I have a better system for this frame This one's got my cells. This one's got brood ready to hatch. So I'm gonna put it in this way. The brood facing the cells. Put this one. And then I'm going to swap out the frame from number five and put it into this one, one of the outside frames. So they are closer to, closer to equal in strength. So I'll just take this one, far outside. So, and then we move some out. Take this one, put it in right there. So that way, that way the resources are a little bit more evenly distributed. So I'll have a better chance of. Getting some, getting some queens. And ideally, I get two, but if I only get one, then I can live with that and uh, try to get to get through winter. All right.
and just open them up. Easy as that. Okay, that's it. That's it for today. So, had a bunch of queen cells on one frame, and then like some of them were capped too, and then the other one had one good looking open queen cell that they can finish up, and then another one that looked pretty good, and then one that looked like it was slightly damaged. Like one side had gotten flattened a little bit. It doesn't. It didn't look like the larva had been damaged, but it was damaged. So they may terminate that one. But there were three three total queen cells in this one, and then I don't even count how many were in this one. I was probably closer to seven, maybe six, six or seven, something like that. A lot. So. That's where things stand. Most of the workers, this this one here probably does have a bit of an advantage because the queen cells in here were capped already and it's only been seven days since I split these up. Um, so she'll be hatching out probably within the week. And then this one, since they weren't capped yet, are probably about half a week behind the other one. But I won't need to get into these until, let's see what's today, today's the 19th, another week for them to hatch out, and then probably not until the first or second week of August, so not next weekend, but the weekend after that, at the earliest, so two, two, two weeks from now, at the earliest is when I'll be able to when I'll, when I'll need to really get in there and see what they're up to. But, yeah, and then the other hives I don't really need to mess with until um, probably two weeks. So I got into them last week and they were fine. I don't, maybe, maybe I have to watch out for swarming on some of the, so maybe I'll have to put um, supers on top of the, the two hives that are over there just put supers on them but other than that um they don't really need to be inspected per se they just need to be managed so that they don't swarm a late season swarm this late in the year would not be good so that's really what the goal is is to is to not let them swarm but there's all this blackberry growing back here stuff is stuff is a nightmare it's Himalayan blackberries, so they're not as tasty as the native California blackberries, and they're way more prolific, too. Look at this thing. Ugh. But the gate's not unlocked, so we can't go around and look at these bees from the front. But yeah, probably just sad. I think I have, uh... in fact, I know I have two supers available, but I don't think they have enough time to fill them. I'll probably have to check a board. Like, do you put five, five filled frames, five filled frames, and then five empty frames and see what they fill, and then leave a, a full box on that one over there. So, anyway, that's it for today, and uh, see you probably in a couple weeks. Take care. Bye.